right, let's go through the settings and let's pick extra settings. Motor speed change settings means when, when the focus gets to within 200 steps of the target position that it's moving to, uh, it will change speed if it's enabled in the controller. So at the moment, uh, the speed that it will change to is 200. Now, if, if I do this, it will update on connect. So it will send that value 200 to the controller on connect, but it will send the fact that it's disabled. If I do this, it will send the value 200 and send the fact that it's enabled in the controller, so the speed change will take effect. Now, the speed change won't take effect because I've disabled it. Right? And if I don't want to send it at all, if I just want to leave whatever the settings are there in the controller, and remember that they're remembered by the controller, I can just do that. So I have the choice. All right? I don't like the speed change, so I'll disable it. The step size you would have worked out from the PDF. And again, you can enter the size in. If it's enabled, uh, if you do that, then it will send it to the controller when it connects but it will disable step size. If this is enabled and update on connect, it means it will send 2.2 plus the enable when it connects. So once you've set it, you don't really need to send any of this any longer because you only need to set it once. Now my step size is about 7.8. So let's enable this and let's send it to the controller. The delays are normally self-explanatory so on connect, if you were using reset controller on connect, you generally require about a three second delay. You don't normally need to change the serial read timeout, except if you were using perhaps Bluetooth, you might want to up that a little bit. The status message box, this is the status message box here in terms of where status messages are displayed and they can stay there for a certain number of seconds of seconds if you want to see them. The delay after move, this is important because when a focuser is going through autofocus moves, there can be some residual momentum, mechanical momentum, and if the uh, client application triggers a camera image uh, instruction and takes a photo, um, it could slightly blur the stars and you get an incorrect um, uh, reading for the forward half maximum values. So what this does is it means when the controller's finished a move, it will delay a certain amount of time before it sends the response back to the client application saying that it's finished. And in this particular case, that delay will be 20 milliseconds. So that's quite handy if you're having th those sorts of issues with um, uh, auto-focusing. Update position when moving means that the focus of position here will be updated when you perform a move. So it just won't suddenly appear as a target position. It'll it'll give you a regular update. Uh, reset connect and uh, reset controller on connect is self-explanatory. Confirm dialog on set pause, set max pause. I like to have that on because you shouldn't be changing max steps that would be, be deemed to be a no-no, same with step size, um, and so, same with step mode. Uh, controller is a micro, means if you enable this, instead of using an Arduino Nano, you can use a micro. And now we get into backlash. Now backlash can be applied in either direction, but remember that backlash is only applied when you change direction. So if you are moving in and the next move is out, then backlash applies. If you're moving in and the next move is in, it doesn't apply. So it only applies when you change direction. And you can apply it when it changes from an in to an out or an out to an in. And you can treat those separately. The number of steps to do that, uh, to apply when it changes direction from an out to an in or from an in to an out, you can specify um, independently. And the maximum number of steps that you can have is 50. So you can send these to the controller um, when connecting, and generally you set this up once, and then you don't need to send it any longer. The controller accepts backlash is really important, because if you're using anything other than firmware 262, which supports backlash, 
like 261 doesn't, you need to turn this off. Otherwise, you end up sending backlash commands to the focuser, and that's a, not a very good idea if the firmware doesn't support it. So for 262, you'd normally enable that. If you've got the backlash enabled in the firmware, and so in the firmware, if we go into the focus of folder and load up the firmware, and this is what the firmware looks like. And remember that down here, there, there it is there, where it says to enable backlash, uncomment the next line. So that's uncommented. So, and I programmed the controller with this, so the, the controller I've got supports backlash. If you had that, then it's not defined. And if you program the controller with that, you need to turn this option off, okay, in the Windows setting. So in the Windows setting, we would need to turn it off. So mine's enabled, so that's fine. So I'll close that, and what I'll do is I'll now connect, and that will send all those values to the controller. And now my controller is completely programmed, and everything's honky-dory. So what I'll do next is I'll cover some of these settings here um, and explain what those are.